We just had a close one, folks. Almost started filming with the mic off. Thank you, Brain, for remembering. All right, so today it's time for a drugstore makeup starter kit 2020. I've done a 2018, 2019, and now we are in the wonderful year of 2020. Woo, it's been a weird one. So the goal of today's video is to kind of share some drugstore recommendations for people who might not know where to start with makeup and you just want to try out some good affordable makeup to kind of start building your makeup collection or just try makeup for the first time. I would have really appreciated this video when I first started getting into makeup. So it's something that I like to keep doing because going into the drugstore or going into Ulta for the first time can be really overwhelming if you have zero idea where to start. And even if you're not new to makeup, even if you're already a subscriber of mine and you're watching this video, thank you. Love you guys. Even if that's you, you can kind of just get a feel for some drugstore makeup that I'm currently loving. And I did try and not include any makeup in this video that I've already talked about in the past too. So even though I have tons of other drugstore favorites, if you are looking for some amazing drugstore recommendations, do check out those past two videos because I still stand behind all those product recommendations and those are still a lot of my favorite products that I use on a regular basis. Am I centered? It's very difficult for me to tell when I'm looking at the monitor. But if you enjoy this video while you're watching, you can give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. If you're new here, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. It's kind of cool to me to think that some of you guys, this might be the first like YouTube makeup video that you're watching. Like if you Google what makeup to buy at the drugstore and this pops up, comment down below if that's you. You can stick around if you want to subscribe. We're pretty chill here but let's get into the drugstore recommendations. All right, so if this is your first time ever really looking into makeup, I don't think that primer, if you're on a budget and you have like a set amount that you wanna spend, I don't think primer is necessarily a step that is an absolute must. Certain primers do make a difference, some do nothing at all. I still fully stand behind my last recommendation, which was the Angel Veil. I still think that one's kind of the way to go, but I did wanna mention this product, which isn't technically a primer, but if you're someone who doesn't want to wear foundation, but you wanna make your skin just look good naturally, the Milani Soft Focus Glow is super pretty. You can use this kind of as a primer. You can use it underneath foundation, or you can just wear it on its own, or if you have a tinted moisturizer, you can mix it in or layer them, whatever you wanna do. It's a good product because it's kind of flexible as far as how you can use it. So I feel like some people, when you're getting started with makeup, liquid foundation can be kind of intimidating. So I wanted to throw a few options in here that I haven't talked about yet, but again, check out the past videos. A lot of those products were like so tempting for me to mention in this video because I still love them and I still use them frequently. So definitely watch those videos too. But I wanna talk about a powder that I haven't talked a whole lot about that is amazing. It's the Physician's Formula Mineral Wear Loose Powder. SPF 15. So basically you can use this on its own if you don't want a ton of coverage. This does have decent coverage. Like I would say medium coverage depending on how much you use, but this is definitely a powder that does have coverage. It's not like a loose translucent powder and it is glowy and it just sits on the skin beautifully. I actually set my face with it today. I was wearing the, I think this foundation Friday will have already gone up, but if not, it's coming, but I'm wearing the VDL foundation today. And then I put on this powder over top. This is on my face right now. The only thing is this only comes in a few shades and I wish they expanded the shade range. It is a bit dark for me, this shade. Like looking at my arm, you can see my face is quite a bit darker today. So that's a downfall for me. But as far as a powder that just sits beautifully on the skin, isn't high maintenance, you can just use a brush like this. This is the Milani Powder Bronzer Brush. Using these two together, if you don't wanna do a liquid foundation, can add some coverage, give you a really pretty glow. I also like that it has a little bit of SPF in it. You'll definitely still wanna use an SPF underneath all of your makeup. If you are wanting to get into liquid foundation, I have a whole Foundation Friday playlist where I talk all about foundation. I have hundreds of foundation reviews there, which is probably a little bit overwhelming if you don't know where to start. So I do have the best foundations for dry skin, oily skin, acne. I'm gonna link a few of those down below. I would say this one, as far as a current foundation that's newer from the drugstore is amazing. You can get this at Rite Aid. It's Koki Full Coverage Foundation. I wanted to mention this one because this is a more matte foundation and full coverage, but it does look good on dry skin as well, which is kind of hard to find with a matte foundation. And the other reason why I wanted to mention this one is that if you have something that's full coverage and matte, it's kind of easier to transform. So even if you're not someone who wants a full coverage foundation, you could use less of this. You could mix in some of this. I did a whole video on how to transform your foundation. So I'm gonna link that in the eye and down below. But I just feel like if you start out with something like this, you can get it 
to look different ways. But if you just want to wear it full coverage and matte too, it's very long lasting, beautiful, soft matte finish, doesn't look drying or crepey or too much. So for concealer, I think e.l.f. makes some of the best concealers. I mentioned their 16 hour camo concealer in my last drugstore starter kit video. But you can get e.l.f. at Target or online. I'm having a brain fart. Are they also an Ulta? They might be an Ulta now. All of the makeup I'm talking about today, you can find in a physical drugstore or physical Ulta. So I feel like that's easily accessible for most people. So this is the more matte version, but I also really love their new hydrating camo concealer. So this is more of a satin kind of creamy dewy finish. So once you set your concealer with powder, you really can't tell a whole lot. It's more about how it wears on your skin. And if you have drier under eyes, this might be a better option. Both of them are full coverage, but I would say this one has a little bit more coverage. You need the tiniest amount of this one. I have the shade Fair Beige, if you were wondering my shade. But if you just use a touch of this, like a dot, you don't need to do the whole triangle thing. If you just use a dot or two of this, I feel like this is good starter concealer. So like I said, if you are on a budget and you're not getting a primer, I do think setting spray is something that's worth it to get. It can really just transform the finish of your face. So say you put on a powder, sometimes the setting spray can just melt it into the skin, make it not look like a powder is sitting on top of your face and just kind of melt everything together. So a drugstore setting spray that I haven't talked a whole lot about that I do like, this one's a few bucks, super affordable. It's a Wet n Wild Photo Focus setting spray. You can get Wet n Wild at pretty much any store, I'm pretty sure any drugstore. Target, drugstore, CVS, Walgreens, you name it, Wet n Wild is there. The setting spray I love because it's just one of those setting sprays that doesn't add too, too much glow that sets everything, melts everything in. But it's not something like Dewy Glow. I love the Catrice Dewy Glow as well, but it's not like this where it's gonna be like, whoa, major glow, but it does set everything. And I really like that this one has an even sprayer. So you're not gonna get like blotchy watermarks on your face when you spray this on. If you have a good top, sometimes you do get duds of any setting spray. It's just, it happens. I may have mentioned this bronzer in the 2018 one but I have to mention it again because I just feel like it's the overall best bronzer that you can get in the drugstore. It's the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer, mostly because the formula of this is just very, it is buttery. It's like easy to work with, blends super nicely. I'm wearing it today. It does add some warmth, so it is a little bit more of an orange rather than like a tan kind of cool tone color. But if you're not into this shade and you're around my skin tone, I also really love the Milani Silky Matte 01 Bronzer. You can see a difference in shades right here. So this one you can see is a little bit more of like a brown and this one's a little bit more of an orange. This one actually pulls warmer on the face. Get the shade bronzer, don't get the lightest one. The lightest one is actually too orange if you're around my skin tone, get the shade bronzer. But you can't really go wrong with either of these. I would say these are two of the best bronzers they make at the drugstore. So out of drugstore makeup, Essence is kind of one of those brands that's more on the even, even more affordable end, if that makes sense. They're around like a dollar to five dollars super affordable and they make some of the best blushes this shade especially befitting i'm wearing it today is so beautiful this i feel like will be good for a lot of different skin tones it reminds me of a mac blush like the form of this in the shade it seems like a high-end blush to me adorable is another nice just like pinky blush from elf this one's kind of more of like a little bit of a glow this one is pure matte. You can't really go wrong with Milani Fit Me blushes. This one's in the shade 35. It's just like a light pink kind of peachy color. And it does have a tiny bit of a sheen, so this is really pretty if you have more fair skin. But they make different shades in this one. This is just a good, easily accessible one from literally any drugstore, or any place. And then as far as highlight, I wanted to mention this one by Essence because I feel like this is a good starter highlight because of A, the shade, B, the formula. It's not too over the top. This is in the shade 10 be my highlight shade i feel is very versatile for different skin tones but also the formula of this is just beautiful it's one of those highlights that doesn't emphasize texture i'm wearing it right now it looks very natural but still gives you the highlight depending on how much you use i put on quite a bit today but you can just do like one swipe of this with a brush and get a more natural look and it just gives you that really pretty glow from within look if you do want a super beaming highlight this one. You guys know I love this. Just My Type by Makeup Revolution. Beautiful. This is more of an intense highlight. So if you really want that like beam in Instagram-y kind of highlight, 
but that doesn't over the top emphasize texture, which a lot of highlights like this can. This one is beautiful. You can get this on Ulta. So for brow products, I feel like the most user-friendly brow product out there is definitely a brow gel because it doesn't require a lot of skill at all. You literally just brush it in your brows and it adds some color and it keeps your brows in place. So you don't have to like use a pencil and be really precise with it. So the CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow is my favorite. This is in the shade Deep and I'm wearing it right now. I love this brow gel. Like over high-end brow gels I've tried, it is amazing. It keeps your brows in place, adds a ton of color. So it might be too much color for some people, but you can wipe off the applicator quite a bit if you don't want as much color. So you could just go like this and then go in because it does deposit a lot of color. But if you've never really filled in your brows and you kind of want to start trying, brow gel is definitely the way to go. I do have a ton of drugstore brow products that I've been loving, so I think I'm going to do a whole other video on that. Let me know if you guys want to see that. Let's talk eyeshadow palettes. So I have two eyeshadow palettes that I did not mention in the past ones that I wanted to talk about. The e.l.f. New Classics palette is one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes of all time because these shades are just very wearable, but they do have some like fun pops of color. Like I'm wearing the green. I'm wearing this whole palette on my eyes right now, but I'm wearing the green on my lid. And the form of these are pigmented, but they're very, very easy to work with. Like super easy to blend. I don't ever have a hard time working with these shadows. So I feel like it'd be good as kind of like a beginner palette, but also for, I think it's around 10 bucks. For 10 bucks, you can get some neutrals in here and get the basics, but also if you're just getting into makeup, it could be fun to kind of play around with some of these other shades as well. It's just one of those that I never don't like how my makeup turns out when I wear this. Did I do that right? <laughs> Double negatives really mess with my mind. I always like the way my makeup turns out. That's what I'm saying. And then this is a newer palette from Maybelline that is friggin' gorgeous. It's the Nudes of New York. This reminds me of an Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. The shades in here, but also the formula. The formula feels like a high-end palette to me. The mattes are friggin' beautiful insanely pigmented again blend out easily the shimmers are pretty if you like the colors in here over the colors in this one which are a little bit more cool toned and just different this one's more of like a warm palette then this might be a good option beautiful so all of my most worn eyeliners are actually drugstore as far as liquid and pencil eyeliners. I mentioned them in the past videos. So this is a newer one to me that I do really like. It's the Wet n Wild Breakup Proof Waterproof Liquid Liner. And it's a brush tip applicator, which is what I prefer. I have uh, dog scratches on my hand. <laughs> brush tips like this that are small are the easiest to control because if you think about it, if it's longer, it's just bending more and it's more flexible and you don't have as much control. This one I would say is a good beginner liner because of the brush. Very black, long lasting, it's a few bucks from Wet n Wild. Okay, so I looked through all of my mascaras and honestly, I'm sticking with my two that I mentioned in the 2019 video because I do just still think that they're the overall best. Coverall Exhibitionist and Essence Lash Princess. I have other drugstore mascaras that I really like, but just overall, like if you're going to go buy one, I would want you to buy one of these two because they're the best. But the CoverGirl Exhibitionist, I would say if you like more natural looking, kind of fluttery, separated long lashes, I would say go with Exhibitionist. If you like the kind of lashes that I have right now, which are more clumpy and a little bit more volume, that's like the look that I prefer go with Essence Lash Princess. A lot of times I layer these or I'll layer them with other mascaras, but they're also great on their own as well, just depending on what you like. So eyeshadow primer is one of those things that I can't live without. I always have to have a base for my eyeshadow because it just makes your powders go on so much better if they have something to stick through and grip to throughout the day. So I've been using this a lot recently. You guys have seen this in a lot of my videos recently. It's the Wet n Wild Camelback Liquid eyeshadow. It's technically not an eyeshadow primer or base, but I use it as that and it works great. Because this is a liquid eyeshadow, it does have some coverage, which I also like. So if you have any kind of freckles or discoloration on your eyelids, this will cover it. And I like that this can also be an actual just eyeshadow. So depending on your skin tone, you could just wear this as an eyeshadow all over the lid, maybe throw in some of your bronzer into the crease, and you won't even need to buy an eyeshadow palette if you don't want to. You could use the highlight and put that in your inner corner and you're good to go. So it's basically this like tan camel color, exactly what it says. It is darker than my skin tone, so I can use it as an eyeshadow as well if I wanted to. If you want to invest in the higher end one, MAC Paint Pot is my all-time favorite. So for lipstick, if you just want a traditional bullet lipstick, which is like 
looks like this. This is a bowl of lipstick. This Milani formula is the best I found. The shade that I love is Matte Naked. I'm wearing it right now, but I actually layered another one over top because I wanted more of a glossy look. But this is a matte lipstick that is pretty dang long lasting for this kind of lipstick. It does stay on. It almost like dries down a little bit once you've had it on for like an hour or so. And it kind of like sets on your lips, which I really like. The formula is beautiful. It's not too drying, but again, it's matte. I've talked about this for a long time, like at least five years at this point, and it's still one of my go-to lipsticks. I'm just gonna give a couple more options in case you want some variety or want a liquid lipstick. As far as a liquid lipstick from the drugstore that is the most long-lasting thing you will ever try, Maybelline, these guys. These are the Superstay Matte Inks. They come in tons of different colors. They're all amazing. They're extremely opaque, long-lasting. Like, these are not gonna budge, so just keep that in mind. If you're not used to applying lipstick and you go in with, you know, a darker shade or red, it's not going to move. I'm losing my voice. It is not going to budge. So just keep that in mind. This might have a little bit more of a learning curve since it is a liquid lipstick. And then I wanted to mention the Ardell lip lacquers because these are newer, like within the last year or so. I'm wearing this on my lips right now in the shade Kinky Nude. And I just friggin' love the shade of this. If you want something that's a little bit more glossy and not matte and just want like a wearable nude shade, I absolutely love the shade and the form of these. Okay, so that was everything. Was this video five million years long? Probably. But I'm gonna link everything I talked about down below in the description box. Again, I can't reiterate enough. You should check out those other two videos because there are some amazing products in there that I really wanted to talk about again in today's video, but I did not, so check those out. That was weird. It just moved. Um, whoa. The box is moving on its own. Okay. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video.